following program on Ada Verna 24 is classified for general audience. It is intended for all ages. It contains little or no violence, no strong language, and little or no sexual dialogue or situations. We would like to remind our viewers that the views expressed in this program by our participating guests are solely viewpoints of them who take part and does not reflect the views and beliefs of the Verena Media Network. Good evening and you're joining us on another episode on Gen XYZ and as you all know this is a platform where we talk about youth based issues or topics. Now today on the program I thought of touching on the fact that about the development of technology here in Sri Lanka and in the world per se. I know we would have spoken about this previously on Gen XYZ as well. But I feel that in order to make a difference in this world, there should be people who think differently as well in order to make a change in this world, especially with the development of technology. Now, I'm pretty sure when we talk about the new application called ChatGPT, uh, there's so many uh, uh, news buzzing around with this application itself. But there's an individual, a young person who has sort of come up with a new application which is called Lingua GPT, which is also similar to ChatGPT, but is incorporated with so many other different languages. Now, we are going to meet this person and he's going to explain to us what this application is all about and what we can do as individuals in order to use this and how we can make this useful as well. So with that introduction, I would like to introduce you to Cicilal Di Silva, who is the innovator of this product. Cicilal, thank you for taking the time to join me on the show today. No worries, thank you, Arash. Now tell me, Cicilal, now ChatGPT is also there. What is LinguaGPT? Uh, with comparison, compare, when compared to ChatGPT, the main difference in LinguaGPT is we have enabled the users to talk with AI in their own language. So where users can get uh, responses and uh, contact with the AI with their own language. So that's the main difference I see with ChatGPT. Rather than that, it's also a generative pre-training uh, transformer, which is sim similar to uh, ChatGPT, where you can uh, talk with AI, get the answers, and uh, ask for creative answers, programming, and etc. Okay, Sisla, so why did you want to come up with this idea? And how did this uh, click you that, OK, you need another application with all different types of languages? Uh, so. I think from last year 2022, maybe around November, uh, October, uh, we we at the University of Liverpool were using ChatGPT uh, very much like uh, all of them. It was a hype at the time. We were like trying to get, we got help of it. We had fun of it. So, and uh, I also like to like speak with my friends, uh, like innovative ideas when I'm free. So when I was speaking with one of our current team members, Kanchan Ekanaga, he was like, uh, what if people could talk with chat GPT in Sinhalese. So I didn't actually care that much, but after when I thought, yeah, that would be great. And uh, so we went ahead and uh, me, Ben, I, we coded it. We, I, we, we enabled people to talk with uh, AI in hundred different languages. So my main idea is uh, letting people talk in their own language to AI. And uh, so as I said, we were experiencing chat GPT English, right? I wanted everyone to experience it in their own language and uh, get the big, best uh, experience and output out of it, yeah. Okay, so tell me, you, you said uh, you were having fun with chat GPT. Yeah. What were you using this specifically for? Uh, just random stuff, actually. Just write a message to uh, my friend, just uh, generate random, uh, you know, pick up lines, write a letter <laughs> to, uh, for a girlfriend who left us, you know, some. Uh, silly stuff actually but yeah we were quite having fun with it all right yeah so what were the challenges that you faced or barriers that you had to overcome when you launched this product before you launched it uh, one of the main barriers is uh, actually I would like to say hosting we would uh, we, uh, yeah, and hosting and privacy I guess that was the main two uh, barriers because we unofficially launched on the 15th of February we think Less than 24 hours, we got around 30,000 site requests, which we couldn't, we didn't imagine. We only expected around 10,000, and all our setups were made to handle 10,000. But uh, that was the first challenge uh, to cater the requests and cater the needs. 
So yeah, from the day onwards, we've been, uh, you know, daily updating and trying to make it best and give the best user inter interface and interaction possible. Okay, how was it, uh, how were you able to gather the team that is required for this and give a small background about yourself, what you studied and what knowledge that you needed to have in order to make this a reality? Yes, so I study at the University of Liverpool, I'm a third year computer science student. Um, uh, I'm uh, hoping to finish my degree this year, I'm uh, on the verge of doing it. Uh, and uh, ben, ben, ben West, Benjamin Luke Weston, uh, he's one of my friends from the university. We have also worked with, uh, worked on some of some uh, projects in the past as well. So I know him well, he's uh, my uh, good colleague. So when we were working together, like uh, when I started coding, I uh, made the workflows and I knew what I needed to do and how to do this. And I got to, uh, together with Ben to make the process efficient actually, because uh, we needed to put this out, out as soon as possible during the hype. That's the main goal of uh, getting together with the team actually. Okay. Uh, what do you think people are using LinguaGPT for at the moment? What are the uses of it? Uh, for us, personally, as a team, we can't see what the users ask for us. We can't intercept the user request because, I, as I said, we value your privacy, value the user's privacy. Uh, but according to the feedback I get from the people who use it, who like uh, send it via message or like let us know in public forums, Twitter, from that we see most of the people use this for education actually, uh, you, you know, to open the doors to the world's knowledge, uh, to get programming knowledge, uh, mathematics knowledge, and uh, uh, and I also think uh, most of them use this to write uh, assignments. <laughs> so I think that was also a good thing for us. But uh, we are so since we see the demand, we are also working on new features to uh, make it easy to write assignments, like you know. Uh, without plagiarism and stuff, so we are working on that. All right, so you are telling me LinguaGPT also can generate essays and assignments for you? Yep. And without getting caught with plagiarism? Uh, it There are ways you can get through plagiarism, but um, I think it's not good to talk it here. Yes, but, uh, that's my other question now. People can definitely misuse this application for yeah. other purposes mm -hmm. and teachers or lecturers, they will not know that they did this. Yeah, if you're mindful enough, you know, you can cheat with anything, I guess, in life. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, if uh, anything we take there as a good thing and a bad thing, for example, the telephone, we can make use of it, we can uh, get contacts, we can do business in the telephone, but we can use it to spend time uh, just to bully others and, you know, uh, just uh, waste our time. So there are good and bad things in every day, everything. So I think in Lingua GPT, HR GPT, AI, including that, you can have good things and bad things, but I urge that uh, people use it for good things. But uh, there are limitations when it comes to bad things. Uh, so I think it's uh, quite good at uh, identifying what's good and bad, but uh, it's not perfect uh, in, what, in, in my thoughts. So yeah, if you use it correctly, I think it's useful. Yeah, definitely. But people tend to use it mostly for the wrong and people do use it for the good as well. Is there any way that the company or, you know, authorities could monitor this by any chance? Uh, yeah, actually, people use this to make money. And uh, I mean, in good ways, uh, freelancers, content creators, they can use uh, AI to make money. But uh, you know, as you said, people misuse this as well. Uh, I think uh, since the technology is quite new, there will be laws in the future regarding the, this technology to get uh, like around this. For even now, there are uh, for now even uh, there are like uh, plagiarism checkers with, uh, which detects uh, if a certain text is written by AI. So I think it's evolving, and uh, I think yeah, there will be uh, ways you can like the authorities can get through to find whether it was done by AI or not. But I think it's it will, uh, these two will actually climb up in a parallel line, I guess, like the evolution of AI and the evolution of laws. I think the evolution of laws is a little bit behind, but I think it will come up to the speed and it will get, catch up with the development of technology. Okay, so when it comes to the output of the product, Oh, does it give it to you in text language or when you take mathematics? Like you need graphs, you need sequences, you need equations. So does, does Lingua GPT align with those type of outputs as well? Yes, so basically what we do, so first of all I like to, like uh, when talking about Lingua GPT I always say this is not an innovation. 
yeah, this is a creation actually because we are powered by open ai uh, uh, the thing is if someone thinks that we just take a response and translate it and just give it the user and it's such a simple thing to do i think they are standing on the wrong place and talking but if you physically use the website you see uh, for example you ask a question a programming question in chinese uh, the, uh, the, for the program to work the keywords in the program should not change right because the computer doesn't understand other languages it understands only the keywords it is yeah. for example in java it only understands the keywords of java so what we have done is we have identified what which, which is the programming code and which is the explanations so we have uh, given the programming code without any translations in the perfect form to copy paste and run the program at, uh, at the same time but the description is in your language where you can read it and understand so similar to maths also uh, we've uh, done a small comparison compa comparison with uh, what uh, chat gpt outputs and lingua gpt outputs we have done few uh, changes in maths as well if you uh, compare the two uh, systems and ask it to generate equations you can see the difference because uh, this uh, our system we don't output math, math equations in uh, text based characters but we use something else uh, a, a math related uh, workflow because uh, to get the formulas and the symbols perfect and uh, let the users uh, get the maximum uh, benefit and uh, we need, I, I would like to say to be accurate with the answer we provide to the user. Mm -hmm. So that's what. So it's not just a translation uh, of uh, of, a, of a database, but uh, we do we we do have identified uh, changes and uh, we are improving to make changes. So we are working towards improving. And yeah, will, yeah. All right. So when considering those mathematical outputs, you're saying that the answer you get from ChatGPT and LinguaGPT can be different. Uh, yeah, they are most probably different. Uh, if you, it's uh, like there can be equalities, but I think there are, there are more differences. Uh, yeah, uh, mostly as I said, uh, the where we output formulas, tabular data, and we are working on graphical data as well now. So yeah, uh, so the output is a bit different in my in uh, in my opinion in like. Uh, the user feedback as well. All right, Cecil, and I want to know more options about what Lingua GPT can offer and what we can do to use this app also. And but uh, before that, we have to go into a short commercial break. You're watching Gen X Y Z, and we'll be back soon. Welcome back to Gen XYZ and we were in discussion with Cecil L. De Silva, the founder and the creator of Lingua GPT. And in the first segment, we, were we just left off by talking about the outputs that Lingua GPT can give. So Cecil L., when you launched this product, what were the type of responses that you received and from where do you have the most number of users? Oh, when talking about user requests, currently we get the most number of requests is from Sri Lanka, which I'm happy about because I'm a Sri Lankan. Uh, the next is the United States. Uh, then it comes to UAE, Singapore, China, Italy, and uh, the list continues. Uh, we, we actually we see requests from uh, most of the part of the world, except for the African community, the part of the Africa and a part of South America. Rather than that, I think most of the other countries uh, use uh, even countries like China, Japan. Uh, so yeah, we are happy about it to see uh, people all over the world using a product that was uh, uh, created by two university students. So we are genuinely happy about it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Something that you mentioned was right after our locals use this product, it's the United States that has the most number of users. Yeah. Why do you think that's the case? Because now ChatGPT is also available, mm -hmm. but they prefer using LinguaGPT. Why yeah. do you think that's the case? I think, I, I'm not 100% sure, but I, I suppose it's because when the, uh, there are certain times where ChatGPT is uh, down or it's like, uh, it's serving its max capacity where users are limited to use it. Uh, uh, other, only the premium users have the access. I think at that point, if there is actually a need, people may come to Ringo GPT and use it. That's my suggestion. That's what we have like found out, and that's what we think that's possible. Or else, it could be actually maybe Sri Lankans in U United States who are studying using it. 
there can be different scenarios but yeah uh, anyway we got we we have the second largest request from Un- united states so we are also happy about it all right so you can't monitor the usage of this uh, we can we can only see the number of user requests we get for the site uh, mm-hmm. that's it but uh, as i said before we can't see what the user types what uh, so we can uh, it's like out of our reach actually we can only we only can see uh, the number of requests the visitors the website gets from different regions of the world okay. and uh, diff- in different time periods one question that uh, i think this would be useful for the people who want to l- use lingua gpt when you talk about chat gpt or lingua gpt people think about okay you just ask a question and it will give you the answer but what sort of questions can you ask from this application what can we actually use lingua gpt for in a useful manner so we can describe it as we can use this from the simplest question possible actually of how to add 2 plus 2 for example to the i think the most complex question in neuron physics or like quantum physics we can that's the extent it can go up to and uh, obviously as i said there's the fact of uh, creative responses so yeah this this actually serves i think most of the educational uh, areas such as uh, computer science maths uh, physics uh, biology so where uh, there's a vast range of things we can use this for even for businesses as i said to make money to get creative ideas yeah there's uh, many use cases i guess okay so this, when you talk about creative ideas don't you think there are controversial questions also that could be answered by the ai yes there could be uh, so as i said before uh, Uh, the user should be mindful i guess when uh, uh, to know what to get out of it and what not to get out of it but uh, yeah there are limitations uh, from the what they say controversially but uh, uh, i think uh, they have to be worked in order to uh, minimize the controversial uh, aspects of ai and related subject areas but uh, you are correct there are uh, vulnerabilities in the systems yeah Okay so but when comp- you said that when comparing answers from chat gpt and lingua gpt the answers might be somewhat different um so how far are these answers reliable can we like trust these answers that the ai is generating for us 100% yeah, uh, i think yes uh, so most of the questions obviously if you get a, a answer you can double check it with a, a book or google right so yeah i think uh, uh, the the one of the reasons such number of users to use chat gpt lingua and lingua gpt the ai ai tools basically is because of the trustworthiness of the information i guess because uh, uh, they have experience and they they have used it and found out that there is actually a truth of the information there is accuracy otherwise the uh, computer program given by the system will the, by the ai will not run as uh, as soon as you copy paste right it should be accurate so i think yeah the there's a huge accuracy in the outputs but there there can be flaws i i don't say it's not 100% accurate but there can be but uh, i think uh, it's more more accurate than we think uh yeah, so for another example if you're writing a research paper and you are not actually sure about what you get we can ask the systems to give us references physical references for journal papers so from that you can i think uh, uh very date your answer yeah mm-hmm. for example now if we take the healthcare or medical sector do you think doctors can get advice from an ai regarding surgeries or whatever consultations that they have to provide patients with <laughs> i don't advise <laughs> yeah. I, yeah but i think there's a possibility but i i'm not 100% sure whether it's 100% accurate because it's i don't know anything about medical uh, stuff but i think uh, there's a accuracy because uh, as for what i have read it has uh, the, the chat gpt and uh, the relevant ai has the ability to of answer questions to an extent where uh, like uh, giving uh, remedies for a small uh, uh, illnesses but i don't think uh, it's not i i don't think it's fine to trust what it says at a glance without actually uh, reaching a professional right. are, uh, because there are good things and bad things so you need to be mindful as always okay and also now you said it's it's not 100% correct so when it comes to exams also there have been news everywhere you know people are writing law papers using chat gpt so how far can we trust our human mindsets in the future do you see a drawback a possible drawback in the future in the long run 
I think uh, there will be a huge drawback. I think uh, there are people will uh, tend to uh, use uh, these systems more without actually doing uh, their work 100%. If they used to give uh, 19 hours of work per day or for a piece of assignment, I think they'll uh, reduce it to nine hours. That's what I see uh, the, the use of AI actually comes in at. Okay. Now about the accuracy of the output, you said that it's not 100% correct, but um, how far do you all update uh, Lingua GPT? D does someone always have to be in touch with the system? Uh, we are actually like uh, thinking of ways to improve, like uh, for example the math, math rendering part I said before is an improvement of Lingua GPT. Uh, understanding the coding which is a part of uh, improvements in ling Lingua GPT where we try to uh, give the best user experience. So we are always in touch with the new up updates to be uh, launched in the future, which are coming and which we can initiate to our systems. So we are more than happy to get those new technologies and uh, add it to the system to give a better user experience in a sense. So for example, uh, uh, we've uh, trained the system manually a little bit just to test. So the best example of manual training is uh, we have trained the system uh, to say what Lingua GPT is. So if uh, someone asks what Lingua GPT is, uh, we have trained it what to say. So likewise, we have trained a few textbook uh, context as well, just as a test to see if uh, actually there's a possibility of training all the things in books to this. So we, I think uh, we've successfully uh, done it, but it's a costly operation, I guess, because uh, and, uh, it's, uh, it, it, it maybe affect the efficiency of the system, but we are thinking of ways where we can improve it more and uh, get those uh, knowledge in books or human minds to the system. Uh, so yeah, uh, I think uh, those are the ways we are improving, but there's not, uh, no, no such thing that one person is always in front of the computer updating and stuff, but uh, we are doing improvements. Uh, we are doing actually daily improvements. So we, have, uh, we, we are university students, we have work, but uh, as I said, we every day have a certain period of time fixed just for Lingua GPD towards the improvement of that. Yes. Okay, so when you launched Lingua GPT or um, the development of ChatGPT, which was last year, November, yeah. uh, what were the responses from other nations or from Sri Lanka with regard to accepting this type of AI? Yeah, uh, I think ChatGPT brought many uh, controversies to, to the technological field, but we launched Lingua GPT actually in seven weeks after the launch of ChatGPT, ChatGPT 3.5, I guess, yeah. Uh, so, we've actually received many positive feedbacks. We also have received uh, many negative feedbacks uh, of people telling this is an easy thing to do. Uh, yep, yeah, so I, I, I think uh, for certain people it's easy to do. I, I agree because they can be talented than us. I, I should uh, accept that fact, but I'm a little bit contented and uh, because this is the only product out there running uh, from uh, now we are running for around eight weeks with a growing user request. I'm s a bit happy about that. Always uh, like the simplest example I can give is that people can say swimming is easy, right? You just need to flap your hands and feet. Uh, you can swim anywhere. Uh, then if that's the case, people will never drown, right? So yeah, yeah I think it's easier to say, yeah, this is the thing you can just uh, put a piece of code and say, this is the workflow, use this, but... Uh, you never know when you have to deviate from that. Yeah, and uh, and I think the hardest part is not uh, actually uh, writing the code or uh, like uh, telling this is easy, but I think it's uh, maintain, maintaining the consistency, doing upgrades and having a product where actually not the p negative people uh, like try to put it down, but where people actually use it. So I'm uh, always thinking about the people who are actually using it who like it, who are getting a benefit of it. So yeah, I think uh, even though there's the negative parts, the negative comments coming, I think uh, there are actually uh, people who like this and use it. So I'm, uh, I'm um, our goal, uh, the, the goal of the team is to give those users, the, even the one user who actually uses this for his day-to-day -day tasks and to efficientize his life and uh, to give him the best. So that's our goal. Talking, talking about uh, goals, what was your objective or the final vision that you have when you wanted to come up with Lingua GPT? Uh, one of the main goals I had is the fact for people to talk in their own mother language. 
I'm a Sri Lankan. I value my nationality much. I love my language. Even though we uh, have this interview in English, I prefer if if it was in Sinhalese. That's how I love my language because my language is a, a nice language. So, uh, as you know, if we say or ask something and we get the response from our language, we understand it the most, right? It's I don't know a scenario where the second language you learn is going to be the language you understand the most. So I think uh, if the the my goal is like uh, where people communicate with AI with the language they I didn't uh, understand the most, I think the responses are going to be accurate and the use they're going to be is, uh, far more better than uh, like using another language to access the data. Okay. Have you ever thought about the fact that did you come up with the, this company idea in order of earning something or solely for this purpose uh, that you said? At the beginning, we were only focused at uh, developing Lingua GPD, but I'm happy to say that we are a company now. Mm -hmm. uh, we were started a few projects with a few other clients as well, uh, AI-based projects and blockchain development-based based projects because uh, we are also uh, not in Lingua GPD, but in I mean not for the work ethic of Lingua GPD, but for our team company. There are a few others who are willing to work for us who are good at cyber security and other other fields of technology. So we've incorporated those friends and uh, uh, those team members, and we are also working on solutions for other uh, other needs as well. Okay. Um I think we are reaching our final segment also, but before we go there, we have to go into a short commercial break. We'll be back soon. You're watching Gen XYZ. Stay with us. Welcome back to Gen XYZ and this is our last uh, segment of this episode and we were in discussion with Sisilal who is the creator of Lingua GTP. Now Sisilal, uh, to continue with our discussion, where do you think the world is moving forward at the moment? At what pace? And do you think that we are moving at a dangerous amount of space because technology is improving day by day and you know, we are using AI basically in almost everything. So what, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, as you said, every other day there's a new creation in the technological world, like with regard to AI or with regard to another technological uh, field. But I think uh, that's a good thing, uh, like the evolving of technology as far as you take the maximum use of it. So I think uh, with the development of Technology and the face where people are using it in a, in different countries is, I think it's quite good because uh, with that only people like uh, actually speaking most of the time technology is life, right? For example, uh, if they are if it took ten days to uh, send a letter to someone, now it just takes five seconds. So I think it will take a bit of time for different people to adjust the technology, but when you adjust and find that the useful parts of it, I think they'll incorporate it into their life. So that's what has happened now. They are so uh, like every other person in the world uses a mobile phone. So I think uh, with the evol like the evolving of technology and uh, with the pace where humans are moving, uh, they also move, like most of the people have a fast life. So I think technology definitely helps and the, in you know, the new innovations that come day to day has at least a single purpose. Otherwise, they would not uh, be uh, like the teams would not put their effort on, effort on creating a product. But the, the technological products and the uh, theories, I guess, have a reason behind, uh, uh, like maybe to help humans or maybe to efficientize stuff. Do you think uh, there would be any potential drawbacks in the future because of the development of technology at this pace? One of the main things I think and I saw is uh, humans becoming rather bored to do stuff because uh, most of the things that used manpower, that used thinking power is now uh, like caged to a device which uses ones, one and, ones and zeros which communicates with uh, electronic pulses. So I think uh, there can be drawbacks as they, like 
we can call them drawbacks but i don't think they are actually drawbacks but you know as we drawbacks use, as in would there be a threat to human kind <laughs> i don't maybe there could be always i think there's a maybe uh, but we can't guarantee uh, if you uh, as i say even if you think uh, the mobile phone is a threat right a, a, a person can get addicted to it and uh, destroy their lives we have seen many examples uh, it's always about being mindful of using uh, the technology i guess okay and uh, you being a young individual who has come up with who's closely working with technology and innovation as well what do you think about the metaverse i think uh, it's quite cool i'm also a bit invested in uh, nfts and crypto uh, i'm a fan of uh, nfts and crypto uh, the, the the lands uh, the, the the metaverse lands the games and the the nfts pro- nft projects that launched day by day the cryptos related to that i think they are quite cool uh, the the idea behind crypto and blockchaining is also a co- cool idea so i think metaverse is also uh, i think in a way it's also a nice thing to have uh, it's like if you want to visit uh, like i think with the development of uh, metaverse you can visit any place in the uh, with the development of technology i think uh, with uh, in the future there will be possibilities to visit a place in another country and like actually uh, experience the place uh, like in real life so i think yeah there's uh, uh, quite uh, a lot of good things that could come up with metaverse as well okay do you think uh, ar uh, vr also plays a specific role in the metaverse uh, yeah there's two ways which i think that we can access the metaverse one is through vr where we can virtual which is virtual we, we can where we can actually observe the environment around it but uh, there's a other part of metaverse i see as like nfts where nft creators and the collections are trying to uh, make their nfts uh, using to be used in the metaverse which are like in forms of computer games actually where you are the player and you can go to your uh, own land where you can have your nfts displayed so yeah there's a interaction in in different ways uh, in the metaverse so i think both ways are nice and cool so you being an it student as well uh, what are the other innovations that you thought would be useful to be introduced to our nation uh, Uh, is there anything that you're currently working on yeah, other than lingua gpt i'm working on a project uh, it's a, it's a, a cryptocurrency based learning platform uh, i'm not going to reveal too much detail but it's a cryptocurrency based learning p- platform which will also i think uh, which which i have the idea of connecting teachers and students uh, in different uh, in different parts of the world and to make knowledge sharing equal so that's one of the projects and we started up a project of work in it's called pixel plaza pixelplaza.io it's a nft marketplace uh, based for uh, to uh, showcase uh, pixel nfts where you can have a, a canvas board to draw in pixels and uh, uh, do it in uh, like to showcase and sell your nfts uh, that was also done by, done with by one of my friends me ben and felix one of our university friends uh, so yeah uh, we are working on few of those projects and innovative pro- like creations and uh, i think uh, we are on the other hand we are also dealing with our clients as well okay great uh, what is the final vision that you had for lingua gpt uh, my final vision for lingua gpt which i have now when i'm working uh, towards now is actually to make it a daily part of human lives we are most of the time you go to google to get your knowledge uh, like uh, to find something to go somewhere i'm also thinking of ways where we can incorporate lingua gpd to everyday lives where you can actually where people will always tend to go to it at least once a day so that's uh, my uh, main goal to make it like uh, to globally to ma- like take use of this do you ever think that it will become a necessity uh, that's my goal and i'm <laughs> uh, actually uh, working towards it and I'm uh, I think I'll uh, will do pretty well. Okay. What were the support or the responses you received locally? Uh, actually I didn't expect anything for, like from government bodies or authorities. But uh, yeah, uh, people wise I've received many positive comments as negative comments as well, but I think overall uh, everyone's supportive in some way or another. 
So yeah, uh, I'm uh, pretty happy about the uh, feedback we get from uh, different uh, users as well. As a personal, in a personal point of view, uh, what do you think that young individuals just like yourself, uh, the young people out there who wants to create something new, think differently, needs to come up with in order to help the development of Sri Lanka at the moment? Because Sri Lanka is also not stable. Uh, you know, we are also still a developing country and we are facing some turmoils at the moment, politically, economically. So what do you think young individuals like you can do in order to help our nation? Yeah, I don't think like uh, uh, my uh, creation will totally turn over Sri Lanka, mm -hmm. uh, turn over the world, change the world. Even though I, if I didn't create this, the world would have changed by now. Uh, so there's a, a gap between that. But I think uh, there's the possibility because uh, as I see in like uh, news, uh, as I see in the YouTube and uh, social media, there are pretty, uh, I think, uh, good individuals who are capable of doing new things to the country and uh, obviously there's the possibility i think uh, via new thoughts comes uh, new ideas via new ideas comes uh, the the development so i think uh, uh, the youth can obviously be a huge part and uh, play a huge role in the process of uh, taking a country and the world forward rather than just sitting and uh, maybe wasting time like others i think it's there's uh, like uh, inven inventors, uh, people who are actually working towards ma making something great, even the uh, smallest idea uh, to, for example, to turn a light bulb by your t touch of a button from your phone. I think uh, there's something creative in everyone's idea. How can you describe the ability or the capacity of human minds for change? Now, especially in Sri Lanka, I'm pretty sure like a lot of people are not adapting to change because they are sticking towards their comfort zone. So when technology is introduced in this type of way and people need to be thinking differently as well. So what do you think about the mindsets here in Sri Lanka about change? Um, I would not like to comment about uh, mindsets of people because it's their individual thoughts, but uh, I would like personally, I'll tell what I think, not about the mindset of other people, but how, the way I think. Uh, I think uh, it's uh, change is a good thing. Change can also be a bad thing. Uh, we should always think before before doing the change. But you know, if the world is uh, moving at 60 kilometers per hour, and if we are stuck in a, uh, uh, if we are moving at 15 kilometers per hour, there's a big difference, right? But I think if we can keep up with the speed, keep up with the changes and, you know, adapt to new technologies. I think uh, that would uh, definitely benefit uh, as individuals. All right. So oh, before we end our program, what can you tell the users of Lingaj VPT or ChatGPT in like in ways that they can use this application for the betterment of humankind or the development of our nation? Yeah. Uh, so the main thing is where we can use Lingaj VPT is uh, we are we can get the knowledge. Yeah, that's where I see the main point is uh, because this opens a door to the world where people with different language capabilities, li different liter li like literal levels to actually access the system and get information and either in a slow phase or a fast phase, there's the ability for everyone to learn. So I think the factor of everyone learning new things, uh, dealing with uh, the new technologies, getting the latest news, trying out new things, I think that would uh, specifically help to move forward uh, with uh, as a country. All right. Thank you then, Cecilia. Uh, we've reached the end of our program as well. And thank you again for sharing your ideas and congratulations on this innovation as well, this creation, as you mentioned. And I wish you all the very best thank as you. well. Thank you. Rosh. And I hope that, you know, young individuals out there just like you who have creative ideas to bring it out to the world in order to, you know, help the development of our nation as well. Again, thank you so much for sharing thank your you ideas. Much. And that was our episode on Gen XYZ. We'll be back again next week with another topic or issue based on the youth. Just in case you can watch us on air, you can always re-watch by catching us on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash English. I'm Suzanne Shanali. Stay safe and have a good night.